Rem, as I made mention, we see remnants of this concept, which you see in the other world religions. However, where the other world religions somehow peel away to the side is in the sense that they then make their major protagonist at the source of deity, when that major protagonist has not made that claim to being the source of deity. So, for example, Christians. Have you come from a precisely? Have you come from a Christian background or? Yeah. Which country are you from? If you don't want me asking. Australia. Australia. Excellent. Yeah. So Christians made Jesus God. When the man himself made no such claim, if we read the explicit statements in the New Testament, he attributes good, um, only God is the one true God, and he is the messenger of God, which is the Islamic justification as to who he is. So we've got a sign just over here, which tells us these are prophets sent by God, which you are familiar with, I'm sure. Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon them. So these are messages sent for the betterment, for guidance to mankind, to appreciate your creator. Does that make sense? So you believe in God? I believe in creation, yeah. Yeah, you believe in creation. So what we say, we are we are the creation of God. However, we are not akin to being God. No, excellent. So the Islamic message is quite, um, you know, derived to what you're saying as well. So we are creation, yes, but we are not the creators. We didn't create ourselves. So what we believe is a supreme creator, one singular being who is unlike his creation. It fits very well with the concept of the, the universe is itself finite in the cells that is created. But there has to be something beyond that which has created the universe, which is unlike the universe. Makes perfect sense. So the Islamic model of who that creator is, in terms of logic and understanding, makes most sense. Out of all the world's religions, Muslims will commonly, proudly make this like beating of the chest to say, well, look, we've got the very best concept of God. It fits very nicely with philosophical arguments and resonates well with general arguments as well, you see. So then we, if, with their being a creator who's unlike his creation, then we said that creator is worthy of soul worship. So we pray five times a day, which you may or may not be aware, at prescribed times to acknowledge our creator as ordained by our creator which is worthy of worship this is something which are unfortunate because you come from a christian background background from australia are you ethnically greek no you're not okay i thought you were. maybe he looks at the so uh, yeah. so uh, so basically speaking the invitation that islam presents is that we have to obey god we man is never god he's not a woman he's not an idol he's not a statue he's unlike his creation once we've fathomed that point and then realize that we're on this earth miraculously and one day we're going to depart this earth as well. We were here miraculously, then we will be raised as well once we die. And God will judge us for our actions on this earth. People who dismiss that are dismissing themselves because we're here in the first place. So to be here in the first place with everything conducive to life in itself should make someone reflect deeply upon this. So Islam resonates best with the inclination of the human heart. Make sense? Yeah. Would you like to ask anything? I've gone on a bit relentlessly there. No, that's all right. I, yeah. mean, uh, I enjoy hearing it. That's why I wanted to grab it. I just wanted to give it a read and I guess yeah. like come to my own conclusions about religion and I guess like see about how, in what ways, like on a deeper level, um, are there comparisons and similarities between Christianity and like, um, Islam. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so this is what um, I seek to show to you during my little uh, pre pre preamble there to you. But basically speaking, we do see remnants of truth in the Christian faith as well, where Christ has made express statements which attribute God as the only true God, and He is the messenger of God. Which is what we as Muslims believe, that Jesus was a messenger of God, a prophet of God. Same thing with the prophet Muhammad upon whom we peace. God's final messenger to mankind. But that's all he was. No more. No more. Then you cease to have his magnificence. The creator is beyond the creation. As me and you speak, what's between us? Time, matter, space, energy, components of creation. But God is beyond that. In the metaphysical realm, which is beyond our comprehension. So hence, our, so you see how I'm, I'm bringing that in. So in terms of your uh, singular point about the similarities, yes, in, even in other faiths which may be deemed as polytheistic, even they understand that there's only one true God. But what they then do, 
is because there's a multiplicity of different authorships, authors within all the world scriptures except for the Quran, which is a singular verbatim word of God Almighty. All the other world scriptures, the Bhagavad Gita for the Hindus, the New Testament for the Christians, the Old Testament for the Jews, all the scriptures in some capacity or another, they don't come from a singular divine source. They've come from a multiplicity of different sources. And they, what they then do is that they make the creation akin to the Creator. And this is where Islam comes in to rectify that, to tell no, our Creator is unlike His creation. However, He sees every single move of us. He's closer to us than our jugular vein on our necks. He sees how He's created everything. His power is incomprehensible. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So basically speaking, so basically, so basically speaking, what we say to you then in, in this regard is when you follow, when you understand the tenets of our religion, it will make most sense to you. Particularly if you believe in this concept of a creator, religions, what, and I've given you some priceless information. All the world's religions essentially espouse one God. I was just speaking to a Hare Krishna guy just a few moments ago, and I was showing to him within their scripture, it also speaks of there's only one God, and make no imagery of that God. However, they still make imagery. It speaks of third party narratives. They make imagery of that creator, despite the fact within the same religious scripture is, is prohibiting one to doing so. So Islam comes as that relentless message. One God, unlike his creation, worship him and him alone. One day we are to return to him, he will judge us. This makes sense. I hope that's answered the question. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it, yeah, thanks. I appreciate the conversation. Thank you, thank um, you. I'm going to get off now because I've just finished work. Okay, no. Uh, um, Delighted to speak to you. Thank you so much. Please pass by again. Thank you so much. I've had a nice conversation there with the Australian lady. Um, and so the inclination towards Islam is strong. We've got the very best concept of God. Things make sense. Alhamdulillah, people are coming towards the religion. Assalamu alaikum. Huh? It's fin finished, yeah. We just concluded that the understanding of the concept of God, which is fundamental in the Islamic con understanding, that there's only one God, and that all the other religions essentially espouse the same thing. There's only one God, however, they make imagery of God. They associate partners with God, despite the fact that in the same scriptures, it makes it clear that there is no other God besides that one true God. So we should be blessed that we've got the pure monotheistic source of Islam, the pure religion as ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakumullah, assalamu alaikum.